நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பு எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பன்னிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த தமிழ் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அவர் ரெனோண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி த லிங்க் ஆஃப் த ஒரிஜினல் வேர்ஷன் தட் இஸ் அ தமிழ் வீடியோ இஸ் கிவன் இன் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் பாக்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் வீடியோ திஸ் இஸ் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் தீபா அண்ட் ஐம் ப்ரெசென்டிங் யூ த இங்கிலீஷ் வேர்ஷன் ஆஃப் த தமிழ் வீடியோ In my last video, I explained about many astrological concepts of moon, significance of moon, etc. In this video, I am going to explain about the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Aries Ascendant. For the native of Aries Ascendant, moon is the lord of the fourth house. For the native of Aries ascendant moon is the most friendly planet of Mars which is the house lord of Aries and lagna lord therefore in any situation moon will try to deliver benefits to the native we call the 9th and 10th house as house of dharma and house of karma the lord of these houses are called as dharma karma dipati the lord of the fourth and fifth house can give 50% of the benefits delivered by lord of the ninth and 10th house the lord of the greater quadrant and trying together forms dharma karma dipati yoga for the native of aries ascendant the lord of the fourth and the fifth house can also deliver a good amount of benefits the lord of the fourth and fifth houses are moon and sun therefore moon is a planet which delivers benefits to the native of aries ascendant for the native of aries ascendant moon is a planet which is the lord of fourth house signifying mother and moon is the natural significator of mother when moon has good strength then definitely it gives great benefits in order to predict the benefits delivered by moon in 12 different houses for the native of aries ascendant it is first of all necessary to know the strength of the moon that is light energy of the moon and you all know very well that where moon resides that particular house becomes rashi i will give you an important tip to gauge the light energy of the moon the moon is said to have good light energy when it is 5 days before purnima and 5 days after purnima 
In other words, the waxing phase from Dashami Titi until waning phase Panchami Titi, Moon has got good light energy. In any situation, Moon should not be in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu or aspected by Rahu or Saturn. Even if the Moon is in conjunction with Ketu, it is okay to a certain extent, but it should not be definitely in connection with Rahu. When Moon is in conjunction with Ketu, it is Grahana Dosha. This reduces the light energy of the Moon to a certain level. Moon should not be definitely in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu within 8 or 13 degrees. In case of this conjunction happens based on Pabatwa of Saturn, Moon will get affected. The Saturn aspect on the Moon affects to a certain extent where its conjunction spoils the Moon completely. Well, what will be the antidote for these sort of conjunctions? The connection of Jupiter or Venus to the Moon is the antidote. In any situation, when the Moon is in conjunction with Mars, it is not considered to be Pabatwa. Based on the house effect, you have to decide it. What are the exceptional cases? For the native of Virgo and Gemini Ascendant, the conjunction of Moon and Mars is not good because Mars is a functional malefic for the native of Virgo and Gemini Ascendant. And moreover, Mercury and Mars are dead enemies. When there are rules, the exceptions also exist. Some might question that I specified a point that Mars and Moon conjunction is not considered to be Pabatwa. Still, the Nedu of Mithuna or Kanya Lagna suffers a lot. The reason is you have to learn the exceptions as well. For the native of Gemini and Virgo Ascendant, Mars is the worst enemy. The Ascendant Lord Mercury and Mars are dead enemies. And moreover, for both of these Gemini and Virgo Ascendants, Mars is a functional malefic. So, with whichever planet Mars is in conjunction with, Mars will spoil that particular planet for the native of Gemini and Virgo Ascendant. And there are some more points. Moon should not be eclipsed. Moon should not lose its light energy. Moon should not be in connection with malefics. The antidote for all these is the connection of natural benefits like Jupiter or Venus. Well, if you combine all these points that I have listed so far, that is significance of the planet, status of the planet, which is Thanabala, its responsibility in one's natal chart. This is more important. You can definitely make the best predictions and you can identify what moon is going to deliver in one particular natal chart. Now, let me explain the effect of moon for the native of Aries Ascendant. When moon resides in Aries, then it is known that the person is Mesha Rashi, that is Aries Rashi. For the native of Aries Ascendant, when moon resides in Aries, it means the fourth house Lord is in tenth house to its own house as per Bhavat Bhavam. There is sometimes a possibility that Mars and Moon might be in Parivartan. When Moon is in Parivartan with Mars, it is considered to be very auspicious. Having said all the above, when Moon is in Aries and has got good light energy, it is considered to be very auspicious. In addition to this, if Moon has a connection of Jupiter or Venus, 
it is not considered to be more favorable. When fourth house lord moon is in the ascendant house and got aspected by Venus or Jupiter, the native will have such a stable and strong mind. The native definitely will possess the ability to perceive everything. The native will have a very, very strong mind. The native will keep the words that he says. However, the native will be an angry person because both Lagna and Rashi has got the connection of Aries. In case if you find a person with planetary position I mentioned here and you still don't find him to be an angry person, what will be the reason? Any guess? It means Mars got affected and Mars is weak in his natal chart. It means Mars is in a Pabatwa state. In those natal charts whose Mars is Pabatwa, they will be afraid of everything. The native will be a coward, a chicken hearted person. Therefore, there are exceptions for all the cases. Please try to understand astrology on the basis of light energy. If one is born as native of Aries Ascendant and Aries Rashi, and then Mars has good strength while residing in Aries, the native will be extremely an angry person, a vibrant person, and definitely a good person. The person will be filled with a lot of courage as a commander will never be a coward and will be in the front row in a battlefield. The native will not crouch to attack others. The native of Aries Rashi or Aries Ascendant will not be in such a way to take a back seat to command others to do something. The native of Aries Ascendant or Rashi will aspire to lead a troop as the commander and will definitely possess all the great qualities of a commander. More the light energy of the moon, more the level of the position. That is ranking. If the moon that resides in Aries is full moon, it means the person was born during Ayupasi Ashvena, that is mid-October to mid-November. Suppose if you were born during the month of Ayupasi, that is mid-October to mid-November, full moon, then it is considered to be more auspicious. Imagine you are native of Aries Ascendant and Aries Rashi and born during the full moon in the month of Ipasi, that is Ashvina, mid-October to mid-November, the planetary position will be as follows. The moon resides in Aries and the sun is in the house of Libra. Based on the light energy of the moon, the natal of Aries ascendant will gain all the benefits. Now, let me explain the effects of moon in the second house Taurus for the natal of Aries ascendant. When moon resides in the second house, it gets exalted. The fourth house lord gets exalted in the second house, which is Taurus. It means the native has got a good mother and a good heart. As far as the moon is not affected, then you can definitely make the best decisions. Okay, one of my subscribers asked, what would happen when Saturn is in conjunction with the moon? I have detailed a lot about the connection of a malefic with the moon and still one of my subscriber has this doubt. Definitely moon should not get the connection of Saturn or Rahu which will affect the moon to a greater extent. I already said moon should not be in conjunction or should not be aspected by Saturn which will make the moon Pabatwa. 
When moon resides in the second house, that is in Taurus, it is considered to be a good position. As per Bhavad Bhavam, when moon resides in Taurus, it will be in the 11th house to its own house Cancer. As per Bhavad Bhavam, when a planet resides in a 3rd house or 11th house from its own house, the planet will definitely do its house effects. Therefore, for the native of Aries Ascendant, when moon resides in Taurus, it gets the highest Thanabala, which is exaltation, and it also resides in the 11th house to its own house Cancer. So, it delivers the benefits of the house effects completely. Now, let me explain the effect of moon in the third house for the native of Aries Ascendant, which is Gemini. The house lord Mercury is the son of the moon and moon is the mother. Moon likes its son, that is its child, Mercury, very much. No mother will hate her child. Moon likes Mercury very much. Mercury is a friendly planet to moon. The most friendly planet to moon is indeed Mercury. On the contrary, the worst enemy to Mercury is the moon. Because Mercury does not like its own mother. To explain this concept, our great sages have rendered a story. Our community is the one which has explained many concepts by means of stories. I have often narrated the story of the moon and Mercury in my videos. Because it is an easier way to memorize the concepts when it is rendered in the form of a story. Everybody likes stories. And it is easy to memorize the concepts based on the stories. Moon likes Mercury very much and Mercury is the most friendly planet to Moon. Those who already know the story will find the story a bit boring. Those who listen it for the first time will be a great surprise. The planet which is most liked by the Moon is Mercury whereas the planet which is hated most by Mercury is the Moon. This was simply explained by a story that Mercury was born as an illicit child of the moon. A mother, whether her kid is an illicit child or not, she always likes her kid. She can never hate her child. But imagine the shame and humiliation that an illicit child will face in the society. Everybody will brand the child as one who does not know the name of the father to describe that it is illicit. The worst humiliation to a person can be brought when the nature of the birth is questioned. The person will lose his courage when he was humiliated in such a bad way. It was at that moment that an illicit child will start to hate its mother. The child will hate the mother very badly. A child that was born in a way that the society cannot accept will definitely hate its mother. The great Maharishis in order to explain the concepts of astrology narrated a story that we can memorize these concepts easily. Mercury is an illicit child of the moon. So Mercury hates its mother. No matter whether the child hates or not, the mother will always love the child. Based on this concept, Mercury will hate the moon, but the moon will like Mercury very much. If you understand these relationships, then you can make much better predictions. Well, now let us come to the point. When moon resides in Gemini, it will be in a mental state like that of a mother which resides in her child's house. Here the enemical or friendly house does not factor in. Only Mercury will be in a avastha since moon resides in its house. 
because mercury does not like its mother moon mercury will tolerate when the moon resides in its house but moon will be in a very happy mood because it resides in its son's house it will not bother whether mercury treats it in a good manner or not the mother will think after all it is a child that treats her badly so it will accept it with great love and patience as per bhavad bhavam when the moon resides in gemini it will be in the 12th house to its own house therefore in order to make predictions you have to gauge the light energy of the moon i always reiterate a point regarding the nature of aries ascendant for the native of aries ascendant any planet that resides in the house of mercury will not deliver benefits because mercury is the worst enemy to mars and mercury also becomes a functional malefic but here there is a little bit of security there is an exception when the major planetary period of mercury happens because the major planetary period of the rashi lord is going to happen if it is dasha of mercury the combination here is the native is aries ascendant and gemini rashi in general the third house is a hidden house and based on the light energy of the moon you have to make predictions when the native is aries ascendant and gemini rashi it is a sort of security when the moon resides in gemini it should not be in connection with saturn or rahu The stars that reside in Gemini are Mrigashira, Ardra and Punarvasu. If you are native of Aries ascendant and moon resides in third house, it is a big security to you. Because it will be the dasha of the Rashi lord. What is the reason or what is the benefit of this planetary placement? because the dasha of ascendant lord and dasha of rashi lord will not deliver worse effects of course you have to check the pabatva of the planet like a human being having two eyes even if one is lost still one can manage with the other like even if we lose one hand we can manage with the other the same way ascendant lord and rashi lord will act here you have to check the subatva and pabatva of the planet and its strength having said all these in a way the native is aries ascendant and gemini rashi it is good based on the light energy of the moon you have to understand this therefore even when native undergoes dasha of mercury which is functional malefic since it is rashi lord it will not deliver worse effects this is why i said for the native of aries ascendant when moon resides in gemini it is not such a worse shortcoming subatva and pabatva of the planet are really important and you have to check the light energy of the moon now let me explain the effects of the moon in the fourth house which is cancer when moon resides in own house it gains tanabala it is considered to be very auspicious when moon resides in cancer in case if moon resides in punarposam that is punarvasu nakshatra it is considered to be more auspicious because nakshatra lord is jupiter you have to make predictions based on the light energy of the moon when moon resides in cancer it has got its own house status it will not deliver worse effects here the moon definitely should not be in connection with saturn or rahu when the fourth house lord is in its own house for the native of aries ascendant moon 
will deliver immense benefits. Now let me explain the effects of moon in fifth house that is in Leo. When the fourth house lord resides in fifth house, it is considered to be auspicious and it is considered good yoga because a Kendra lord resides in the trine house. That is a quadrant lord resides in a trine house. Well, what about the effects of moon in the sixth house? That is Virgo. I always say that a luminous planet should not be in the sixth house. When moon resides in Virgo, you have to definitely make predictions based on the light energy of the moon. When 4th house lord resides in 6th house, there will be some shortcomings related to the house effects of the 4th house. This position is not considered to be good. The moon will not deliver the 4th house effect properly. The planetary position will spoil the mind of the native and will spoil the status of the mother as well. Based on the strength of the dispositor, that is Mercury, you have to make further predictions. Moon should not be definitely in connection with Rahu or Saturn here. Now, let me explain about the effects of moon in the 7th house, that is Libra. In case of moon is full moon, when it resides in Libra, it will aspect the ascendant house and it makes the ascendant house Subhatva. It will raise the native to such a great level in his life. When moon that has got immense light energy aspects the ascendant house, it delivers a lot of benefits. During the show of moon which has got a lot of light energy aspects the ascendant house, it delivers great benefits. In addition to this, if it has got connection with Jupiter or Venus, then moon delivers immeasurable benefits. It is important to assess if native undergoes dasha of moon or not. Because based on the birth star, the native is going to enjoy the dasha of subsequent planets as per the Vimshotari Dasha system. Having said all these, when moon resides in Libra with good light energy and aspects the ascendant house, it is considered to be very auspicious. Based on the nakshatras, one is going to undergo the Dasha of a planet. So, you have to also check whether a person is undergoing the major planetary period of the planets which is very very important having said all these when moon resides in seventh house it will deliver benefits now let me explain the effects of the moon in the eighth house for the native of aries ascendant when moon resides in scorpio it gets debilitated there it is also important to note that the moon, which is a luminous planet, is in the 8th house to the ascendant house. So here, can we make a hasty prediction like it is very bad? No, you have to make predictions based on the light energy of the moon. The 4th house lord moon is in the 8th house and it gets debilitated there. So it loses its tanabala. Suppose if the native was born during Vaikasi, full moon, that is Vaishaka Purnima, mid-May to mid-June, full moon, then moon has got a lot of light energy and it will deliver benefits. Astrology is something you have to deal with in-depth knowledge. Of course, moon is debilitated here. In addition to this, Fourth house lord is in the eighth house to the ascendant house. When moon resides in Scorpio, for the native of Aries ascendant, it loses its tanabala. In addition to this, it is also in the eighth house to the ascendant house. 
This means that the moon is completely spoiled. However, all these can be altered merely by the aspect of Jupiter. Imagine Jupiter resides in Cancer where it is exalted and aspects the moon in Scorpio. The predictions will go upside down. Or let us imagine another situation where Nadal was born during Vaikasi, that is Vaishaga full moon, Purnima. It will indicate that the Nadal has got a very good mother and all the significance of the moon will be delivered excellently. This is the advantage of the Subhatva. By the grace of Almighty, I realized all these. This is where certain traditional astrologers fumble. As soon as they see in one's natal chart, moon in Scorpio, which is debilitated, and also in the 8th house to the ascendant house, the astrologer will predict like the natal's mother is of not good status. On the contrary, the natal will say that they have got a mother of great status. The mother might have a very great reputation in the society. She will be a famous person in that town or famous around the world. The astrologer who predicted, that is who made a wrong prediction, might rack his brain as to why his prediction has gone wrong. While moon is debilitated and it is in the 8th house to the ascendant house, how the mother could be of great status? A simple reason which is nothing but aspect of exalted Jupiter on the moon can change the entire situation. Jupiter might have aspected the moon from the fourth house that is Cancer where it gets exalted or might have aspected from Pisces which is its own house which is 12th house to the ascendant. Apart from these reasons the moon itself can be heading very close to Purnima or it can be a full moon during the month of Vaigasi that is Vaisaka. If you understand the concepts of Subhatva, you can make the predictions very easily and spontaneously. Therefore, the debilitation status of the moon or its position in the 8th house to the ascendant house can be ruled out based on Drikbala, Subhatva, etc. You have to check whether the moon is highly Subhatva, that is, it has got a lot of light energy or whether it has got the connection of a natural benefit. In order to make predictions, these points are very important. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the ninth house that is Sagittarius. The lord of the quadrant house is in the trine house and as per Bhavad Bhavam, moon will be in the sixth house to its own house. In general, it is good when moon resides in Sagittarius. For the nadu of Aquarius ascendant, moon will reside in sixth house to its own house Cancer and displacement is very good for Aquarius ascendant. For the native of Aries ascendant, it is auspicious when moon resides in Sagittarius. Now, let me explain the effects of moon in the house of Capricorn. When moon resides in Capricorn, it loses its Digbala, yet it delivers benefits. The position of the moon in the 10th house is better than its position in 9th house and moon delivers added benefits when it resides in 10th house. Though the moon loses its directional strength here, it is important to check whether it has got a lot of light energy and more strength by residing in the quadrant house. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the house of Aquarius. When moon resides in Aquarius, it will be in the 8th house to its own house Cancer as per Bhavad Bhava. In this situation, moon will not do the house effects of the 4th effects 
of the fourth house, yet it will deliver the eleventh house effects. Well, let me explain the effects of moon in the twelfth house to the ascendant that is Pisces. Though luminous planets should not be in the twelfth house to the ascendant house, the moon resides in the house of Pisces, whose house lord is Jupiter, which is a natural benefic. Since the twelfth house is owned by Jupiter, it is okay. When moon resides in twelfth house in Pisces, it means that the native is Aries ascendant and Pisces Rashi. As per Bhavad Bhavam, moon will reside in the ninth house to its own house cancer. When moon resides in twelfth house to the ascendant house, it will deliver 50% benefits and it will not do worse effects because it resides in the house of Jupiter. In case if the moon has got connection with Rahu or Saturn or if the moon itself is Amavasya, then definitely it will deliver worse effects. The connection of natural malefics like Saturn or Rahu and if it is Amavasya moon, definitely it will not deliver worse effects. Well, in my next video, I'm going to explain about the effects of moon for the native of Taurus Ascendant. And this is question time. For the native of Aries Ascendant, why the conjunction of Mars and Moon is not considered to be Pabatwa? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. In the description box, we have added the playlist link of all English videos so far published. The link of Aditya Gurji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available only for Android users. The channel version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Write your feedback to astro.write to us at gmail.com. Thank you.